Welcome to the Parish of St. Stephen, located in West Vancouver. We acknowledge with respect that we worship both the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. Let us pray that we may live more deeply into the cause to action from Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's day to praise you and your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that has passed and your purpose in the week to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Destitute King, one with the hungry, the naked, and the scorned, may our faith be proved not in dogma and piety, but in serving you in the last and the, and the least, through Jesus Christ, the stranger's Lord. Amen. Rich and poor alike, listen with your own heart. His love is for us all. His love is for us all. O oh, rich and poor alike, listen with your own soul. Do not live in fear, and do not live in fear, O oh, rich and poor alike, His love is for us all, I'm rich and poor. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 
and he will put the sheep in his right hand and the goats in his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed, gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In that lesson from Matthew, Jesus tells a story about the last judgment. And in this story, um, Jesus describes it as basically that he returns and he separates people into two different groups. And so uh, like a shepherd separates sheep and, go sheep and goat. And as it, Jesus tells us is that he looks to the group on his right and he welcomes them into his presence and, and, and compliments them and praises them for the job that they did, which was well, well, well done. And he then says, because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was sick, you took care of me. When I was an immigrant amongst you, you welcomed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was sick, you cared for me. And they are surprised because they go, well, wait, when did we do that to you, Jesus? And he goes, whenever you did it to the least amongst you, you did it to me. Now, the people on the left, he says, you know, go away because when I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was hungry, you didn't give me food. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. When I was sick, you didn't care for me. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. And when I was an immigrant, you rejected me. And they're like, wait, when did we do that? When did we not do those things? And he said, well, when you did not do those to the least amongst you, you didn't do them to me. Again, there's what I find interesting is the surprise of both groups. Neither of them, I don't think, were expecting their fate or to hear what they were going to hear. And the way in which certainly the story is told, this is everybody. This is people of all faiths or no faiths. It's people of all religions or no religion. And it's a story It tells us that, well, what was really matters about what we're doing is to the is how we treat the weak and the vulnerable in our society. And the also too that the very first response to anyone who comes to us or people that we see is to be merciful, you know, to do acts of mercy first and foremost, not to really get so caught up into our beliefs. And so what Jesus, I think, is telling us here, besides certainly some very important things about 
exactly how we should be, you know, how uh, how we should treat people who are the vulnerable in our society. But he's also talking about God. He's telling us that God, don't think of God as some some God, you know, this 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 person or up in the sky or or far away, but instead think and understand that God is right here amongst us. That Jesus himself is right here amongst us. And where? And that where he's right here in the messiness of our human life. And you want to see God? You want to see the face of God like Moses did? Then all you need to do is to look into the face of the person who needs your help. You need to look at the face of the weak and the vulnerable, those that are rejected by our society, on the margins of our society, and then you will see the very face of God. It's powerful. The other thing I think that is interesting about this story is Jesus makes no mention of the religion of people on either side. It's almost as if that one's beliefs don't matter. That whether one reads one's Bible or not, almost doesn't matter. That that's not the criteria that's going to, that's the one you're going to be measured by. You're going to instead be measured by how much you love, by how merciful you are, and by how much you cared for the people that are in need around you. What this also tells us is that God is very concerned about the very small things in our life. The very the thing, in other words, that God is cares about how we act on a day-to-day basis in our interactions with everyone around us. It's also too, I think, it's important about who we select to be our leaders. Do we select people who are more characterized by doing the things that Jesus mentioned or by leaders that are more concerned about protecting the end group and protecting those that have instead of caring and taking care of the have-nots. Now, ultimately, too, within this, I think that Jesus is telling us is that God very much wants us. God wants every one of us. God is not really interested in sending away those people on the left, that that's not the first decision. Instead, God loves us. God truly does want to save all of us. And saving in this case doesn't mean just getting in to heaven. Instead, it means transforming our very hearts. It means that God desires to touch us us in our deepest parts of our souls and transform us into a people that automatically first thought is is to care for the person who needs us is to go about making sure that we live in a society and in a world that is characterized by that it's a different world than which we live in instead of a world where power reigns supreme we wish to create jesus wishes to wishes that jesus jesus desires that we instead create a world where love and mercy reign now not many of us have the power to somehow make our entire world you know we're not politicians and we we, we, we're not the people who really have all the power. But what really is going on here, as Jesus is telling us, is in the very mundane and small little acts in our life, that they are going to either reflect the love and mercy of God, or they're going to reflect evil. So as we go out, as we go forth into, the, into our world, and as we live and do wherever we are, to remember that every person who come, we come in contact with, that we are to do as our baptismal, we say in our baptismal covenant, is that we are to, to seek and serve Christ in them. We are to respect their dignity as a human being. 
It doesn't mean that we have to understand or agree with everything they do, but instead we are to seek and serve Christ as if they were Christ. Because I know this, that if any of us were to encounter Jesus, we would do anything that Jesus asked. We would treat him with great respect and shower him with whatever he wanted. Oh, wait, Jesus, you need shoes. Here's the shoes. You know, Jesus, oh, wait, you need some wa clean water. Here's clean water. Oh, Jesus, you're new to our community. Welcome. Let me show you around. It's kind of a very, again, it's a very, a very exciting, in my opinion, thought about what it is we're supposed to be doing. And how it is, especially you know, that we're here at St. Stephen's, we've been talking about a ministry plan that let us hope that whatever ministry that we figure, we decide that we're going to engage in, that it reflects what Jesus is telling us in the story of the last judgment in order that we indeed are truly living as Jesus would have us live, as God would have us live, as God intended us human beings to live. And to always recognize that the secret of life, the very truth of life is this. To love is to truly live and to fully live. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, our country, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For John, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church, for our needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for those who have died in the peace of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people 
you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our request as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh,